Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. In this video, I'd like to show you one of the best reviewed commentaries on the book of Mark. Before I do, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel so you can see videos on Bible commentaries, study Bibles, and other resources that help people understand God's Word. New Testament scholar Mark L. Strauss is the author of Mark in the Zondervan Exegetical Commentary on the New Testament series. Sometimes this series is referred to as the ZECNT series. This particular volume was published in 2014. It is 784 pages in length. Dr. Strauss, if you're not familiar with him, is a professor at Bethel Seminary in San Diego, California. He has written several books. One that he is uh, very well known for is called Four Portraits, One Jesus, which is a study of the Gospels. Four portraits, meaning the four Gospels, One Jesus. I have personally assigned that to students and found it very helpful. Dr. Strauss is also a part of the NIV translation team. The ZECNT series is a very well-reviewed series. I put it in the top 10 of all commentary series. If you'd like to see that page, I'll put a link down below so you can see it after you watch this videos. The ZECNT series is designed for pastors, so it's a mid-level commentary. There is some Greek in it, um, so if you know Greek, you'll be able to utilize those sections more than someone who doesn't, of course. But if you don't know Greek, I, th I think if you're if you're up for a mid-level, intermediate-level commentary, I think you would do okay with this. You might not uh, benefit from every section equally, but overall, I think that you will. Um, it will be a net gain for you. The first thing I want to show you is the um, the outline that Dr. Strauss provides readers. There's not there's not a, a book outline other in this commentary series other than just the exegetical outline for the book. In this case, the Gospel of Mark. So this is this is what it looks like. You have the entire outline here. Oh, this is just the first half of it, and then you have the second half of the book of Mark there. Um, but to in order to find, for example, uh, Mark four verses twenty one through thirty four, you just need to find it in the text. And, and it's not hard to do that. Um, they're just, the chapter and verse are just right at the top. So the table of contents in this, in this uh, particular commentary is just the exegetical outline. Uh, let me show you an example section from Mark chapter 6. And I'll just use this as an example to show what these different sections look like. Uh, this one, and once you under, all the sections are laid out the same, so once you see one, you're going to see how every single passage in this commentary is laid out. This is uh, Mark 6, 6b through 13. The first section is literary context. The second section is the main idea. I think this is going to be particularly helpful to preachers who are looking, who are into, uh, you know, who take the main idea approach to preaching. Every every passage is described with a main idea, usually two or three sentences. I would say this one that looks uh, two long sentences. This one's even a little bit longer than some of the other ones. So they're they're the the uh, the main idea of the passage is really synthesized in these sections. Next is the translation with this with a with a, a graphic layout. The next is the structure of the passage. If you're preaching or teaching through the book of Mark, that's going to be helpful. The exegetical outline is next. And then the explanation of the text. Now every verse is in bold. It's the English translation followed by the Greek text in parentheses and then the English commentary. It's in two columns, so it's just, uh, publishers will often do that because it's just a way to provide more information. It's also just a wider wider commentary than most. So it's just 784 pages and it is jam packed full of information. If it was in a, it was in a single column layout that was just a, um, not a wide as width, it might be a thousand page book. The next section is theology and application. Again, for those who are using this commentary in a ministry context, this is going to be really helpful because uh, the author, the commentator, Mark Strauss, is giving suggestions for application. If you don't take these applications directly, you're at least going to get started with thinking through how to apply this text to contemporary life. So it's very helpful. Um, this section is going to be very similar to if you use a NIV application commentaries. This is going to be very similar to the application section uh, in those volumes. So those headings that I just read you are the same headings for every pass. So you can see here the literary context and then the main idea, the translation, and it goes on. I'm not going to show you it again, but you get the idea that every section uh, follows that pattern. I'll give you a couple of example passages 
uh, from Mark Strauss in a moment. First, just a couple of reviews um, and academic reviews. The Journal for the Evangelical Theological Society review of this volume says, quote, it's a treasure trove of insight. It's an excellent commentary that reflects the author's evangelical faith and features a narrative emphasis. When I looked at the different um, academic reviews that I could find for this particular volume, several of them noted the narrative emphasis that Dr. Strauss takes. And uh, so what does that mean? I, I think that actual approach is actually going to be most helpful to those using the commentary in a ministry setting who are preaching and teaching through the book and want to, besides teaching principles and applications, be able to tell the story of the gospel of Mark. And so the narrative approach is particularly helpful to the to people in those contexts. Uh, one other one, uh, one other review. Uh, the Bulletin for Biblical Research says that this is an excellent commentary that comes from an evangelical perspective and provides an explanation of Mark from a narrative perspective. There it is again. A uh, couple of couple of notes someone might might want to um, know about before purchasing this commentary. Uh, one is that Strauss argues for Mark and priority. So uh, if you're not familiar with that discussion, it's um, it's a synoptic discussion, meaning it's a conversation related to the relationship between Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and which gospel was written first, and what other gospels borrowed from it perhaps or used it as a resource it's kind of the 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 relationship between Matthew Mark and Luke is that synoptic discussion and um Strauss argues for a mark in priority so he believes that Mark was written first he he discusses that more i'm not going to discuss it more in this video i just wanted to give you that, that his position on that the other thing that i want you to know is that he holds to the shorter ending of mark um there is a discussion on whether Mark ends with verse 8 or ends with verse, I think it's 20. I'll, I'll, I'm going to show you that section in just a moment, but that's the other. That's another perspective that people want to know about is what does the commentary say about the ending of Mark. So Strauss argues for the shorter ending of Mark. A couple of examples now. The first one I'm going to show you is Mark chapter 5, from Mark chapter 5. And... You might say, well, why are you showing us this example? Um, because I think it's interesting is why I'm showing this example. Uh, I just think this is an interesting uh, verse, and I think it's an interesting discussion. So this is why I'm using it as my first example. Mark 5, 6, and 7, when Jesus saw at a distance, when he saw Jesus at a distance, he ran and fell on his face before him, shrieking loudly, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of of the Most High. I swear to you by God, don't torment me. So I have thought this passage was so interesting for years because um, it is a demon who is calling Jesus the Son of God, Jesus, Son of the Most High. So that's interesting. And then the demon says, I swear to you by God, don't torment me. So the don't torment me part, I understand. I swear to you by God, being spoken by a demon is just an interesting discussion for me. So, um, what does, what does Strauss say about this? He says, strangely in appealing to Jesus, not to torment him, the demon swears by God. Similar formulas are sometimes found by exorcists against demons, but the reverse is strange. Indeed. 12th tree, that's a, another scholar suggests this is a vain attempt to bind Jesus or put a curse on him. But this does not explain why the demon would appeal to God, his adversary. Surely God would side with Jesus. More likely, Mark presupposes the eschatological interpretation of Matthew's parallel, where the demons call on Jesus to torment them before the time, that is, before the eschatological judgment. The demon knows it's his ultimate fate, which God has decreed. In the face of immediate expulsion by Jesus, it seeks to delay by appealing to God's decree of future judgments. The demon accuses Jesus of jumping the gun. This conversation goes on. I just find that particular conversation in Mark commentary is very interesting. And so um, that's just a little preview of what how, how Strauss approaches that verse. Uh, the other example I wanted to give you is the ending of Mark, because that's always interesting to think about. And I actually wanted to show you visually how, how he, he treats it. Um, so Mark 16, 1 through 8. 
and we have the the main sections again the literary literary context main idea so this is be, this is the shorter ending uh, section mark 16 verses 1 through 8 and then there are some that believe that the gospel ends with verse 8 there are others who believe that there is a, another passage in a lot of uh, popular English Bible translations. There'll usually be some kind of footnote or brackets or something in this section of Mark, at the end of Mark, that says, you know, certain manuscripts may or may not have the the longer ending. So, um, so he covers the shorter ending, and then he has a discussion on the endings of, of Mark's gospel. And why I think this is uh, interesting and helpful, no matter where you come down on this issue, because there's some commentators who take the uh, shorter version view, and they don't they don't include anything about the longer view. No, no discussion, no commentary, nothing. They just end the commentary with sixteen verse eight. Strauss takes the shorter version view, but then includes this additional section, which I think is helpful. He discusses the lorder, uh, shorter or longer ending um, debate or discussion, and he talks about the internal evidence for the longer passage or the external evidence, the internal evidence. Um, and again, he's, he's arguing for the shorter evidence uh, perspective. He says, um, most telling. So this is kind of his, what's, what's, influ what's, um, what's persuasive to him in taking the, the shorter ending. He says, most telling against the longer ending is its disjuncture with the rest of Mark's narrative. The vocabulary and style is different is distinctly non-Markan, with 15 words that do not appear elsewhere in Mark, and a number of others used with a different sense than typical Markan usage. The connection with what precedes it precedes is awkward. Verse 9 begins with the masculine participle referring to Jesus, but the previous verse has its subject has as its subject the women. Mary Magdalene is introduced as if she were a new character even though she has been present in the previous three episodes. The other women who were commissioned by the angel to tell the disciples in 167 now disappear from the scene, and only Mary sees Jesus and reports to the disciples. Finally, while the angel spoke about appearances in Galilee, the longer ending relates only appearances in and around Jerusalem. Now, it, it goes on, and there's more to it, but I just wanted to give you a taste of where Strauss comes down on this. Now, for everything I read, there's a, there is a, you know, a response from the other side of those who take the longer view, but I'm just trying to give you an example of what's found in this particular commentary. Now, what's really fascinating is that even though Strauss takes the shorter version, he actually gives commentary on the longer version. So some of it's critical, um, but verse 9, 10, 11, 12, he gives commentary on every verse with the Greek. And um, yes, and, and then the longer ending um, concludes with, with verse 20. And then it's the end of the commentary. Actually, there's a section on the theology of Mark. Um, but anyway, the ending of Mark, that's, how, that's his approach. So um, I hope this video has been helpful to you in understanding more about this commentary on uh, the book of Mark, one of the best reviewed commentaries on Mark. I'll put more information down below, so please check out the description box. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. Please consider subscribing. Thank you for visiting bestbiblecommentaries.com.